Hello, this is Dr. Baxter with Baxter Health Center. Welcome to my webinar on making healthy choices while eating out. In this class, we're going to discuss the fast food frenzy that's going on all around us all the time, eating out, how to eat out, eating healthy foods, how to eat healthy foods while we're traveling, and what kind of foods can be easily made portable so we can take them with us. Well, I'll take a look at how much money is spent eating out. Typically, $54 billion in restaurants, school, and work cafeterias every year. That amounts to over $2,000 per household or over $800 per person per year. In 1955, 25% of our budget was spent in restaurants. And back in 1999, that's more than 10 years ago, almost 50% of the food budget was spent in restaurants. And it's probably well above that now. Take a look at how weight has changed over the years. In 1955, 30% of the population was overweight. Twelve years ago, more than 60% are overweight. That's a huge increase. Well, when we eat out, oftentimes restaurants are serving bigger and bigger portions. And they're also combining meals as well. Fast food hamburgers in 1957, only had an ounce of meat in them. Now they've got six ounces, and along with the meat is a lot more fat as well. Double burgers have over a 1,000 calories. For some people, that's close to the amount of calories they should be eating all day long. You can see it's easy to overeat. What about snacks at the movies? Well, in 1957, a typical serving of popcorn was three cups with 170 calories. Currently, a typical serving of popcorn is 16 cups with over 900 calories. A Butterfinger candy bar used to be only 2.1 ounces. Now it's over 5 ounces. So you can see serving sizes had increased dramatically over the last few decades. Why? Because they can entice you with larger servings, and that helps them make more money. Certainly not about your health. Look at the soft drink explosion. In 1955, we drank twice as much milk as soft drinks. Now we drink twice as many soft drinks as milk. Pretty sad trend. And with those soft drinks, an explosion in our intake of high fructose corn syrup, which is directly linked with high blood pressure and obesity, as well as a lot of other health conditions. What about the supersized drinks? Back when Coca-Cola was developed in 1894, typically you had a six and a half ounce bottle of Coke. Now it's a 20 ounce bottle, or even more. And a double gulp from 7-Eleven, 64 ounces, 600 calories. Two double gulps would contain as much calories as some people should eat or drink all day long. I suggest all of you Watch the movie Super Size Me. We have it available for rent here at the, at the office. We only charge a dollar because our primary intention is to make it available to everybody, and we use the dollar to buy other videos to check out the patients. It documents what happened to a fellow's health when he decided to eat nothing but McDonald's for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for 30 days. He had some rules. He could only supersize a meal if they asked him, do you want to supersize that? He had to eat everything that was served to him, and he had to eat everything on the menu at least once, so he couldn't concentrate on just the least healthy foods. He had to eat a variety of foods. After a month, he developed high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides. He had no sex drive. He gained 25 pounds in one month. His liver enzymes went from healthy levels of 20 to 40 to over 400 he was dying of fatty liver disease, just as if he were an alcoholic. So considering this, how much fast food is okay? I used to think if I only ate fast food for lunch every day, that wasn't too bad because a lot of people ate it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. After watching this movie, I stopped having it every day for lunch. In fact, now it's really, really rare that I eat any fast food. 
In fact, the only fast food I eat is In-N-Out Burger because they grind their meat there. They cut their potatoes there for French fries. So it's about as fresh as you can get for fast food, and they don't use any additives. Well, how do we eat out in restaurants and stay healthy? Well, first of all, you have to choose your restaurants carefully. We've got a lot of choices out there uh, for restaurants and a lot of choices within each restaurant, too. Oftentimes, they'll only give you a choice of French fries, mashed potatoes, or baked potatoes. But you can ask for vegetables instead of potatoes. And almost all restaurants will do that for you. Most of them will modify your meal according to your requests. So don't be afraid to ask. Because when they give you a choice of French fries, mashed potatoes, or baked potatoes, wow, they give you a choice of potatoes, potatoes, or potatoes. Not really much of a choice. So make sure you ask for vegetables. That's, that's one thing you can do in restaurants. Now, if you know you're going to eat a large dinner, eating out, like for a, di- a business dinner or something, then you can compensate that by eating a smaller breakfast and a smaller lunch the next day. Or if you know you're going to eat a large dinner tonight, you can eat a smaller dinner, uh, excuse me, a smaller lunch today and a smaller breakfast tomorrow morning, averaging out the calories over the three meals. Well, what are some low-fat menu terms we should be aware of? Baked, braised, broiled, caramelized, cooked in own juices, poached, roasted, steamed, stir-fried. These all tend to be lower-fat ways of cooking. But what about these terms? Alfredo, au gratin, bernays, breaded, creamed, crispy, double-crust, fried, prime, rich, scalloped. These sound so much better, don't they? Well, they sound better because we associate these foods with a lot more richness, and that richness is in the form of fat usually. And as you know from previous webinars, fat has more than twice the number of calories per unit weight and volume as protein and carbohydrates do. So you really want to stay away from the rich, fatty foods. When you see these menu terms, you should run the, run the other way and look for terms like braised, broiled, poached, things like that. So when you eat out, here are some strategies you can use. Number one, eat slowly. Chew more. Start with a lower calorie item. Unfortunately, most appetizers are high calorie. But there are some low calorie appetizers out there. Just keep your eyes open for them. You can separate one portion to take home, even before you start eating it. Or you can just save half to take home later. You can share an entree, and you can share the dessert. Or one individual could order an appetizer for their dinner, and the other could order an entree, and you could share. That's what I've done frequently. When you happen to be shopping at a mall and are in a food court, there's a lot to choose from. Uh, Be aware that Chinese food tends to be high in sodium, oil, and some items are high in sugar. But there are some good uh, choices to make as well. You can have a mixed vegetable dish. Hot sour soup is a good choice. Steamed rice, but it should be brown rice. And a lot of the Chinese restaurants are starting to serve brown rice. In general, you should stay away from fried and sweet and sour. And fried rice can have a lot of oil, so be aware of that. In addition... Just because the fried rice looks brown doesn't mean it used brown rice. It's usually brown because they use soy sauce in it. So you need to ask for brown rice, not just rice that's colored brown. Some of the choices available in Italian restaurants can be healthy too, although they tend to have a lot more starch, pasta, bread. So tomato-based sauces are good for you. Vegetable-based soups are good. Caesar salad is another good choice. You want to avoid the cream sauces, pasta soups, large pizza slices, and meat if it's not lean. Most smoothies are very high in sugar. So fruit and vegetable smoothies could be okay as long as they don't add any sugar and if it contains whole fruit, not just fruit juice. Uh, Peanut butter smoothies are going to have some protein in it 
uh, but usually a fair amount of sugar. Ice cream, smoothies, should be a real treat that you have just on a rare occasion. The calories in these smoothies can be over a thousand, so really watch the smoothies, even if it's something that's apparently healthy like fruit juice. Fruit juice is very high in sugar. Now when you stop for coffee, I recommend you choose decaf because we don't need caffeine in our systems and many, many people have unhealthy adrenal glands. Caffeine just makes that kind of a problem worse. This is a particular concern or should be a particular concern for most women as they approach menopause. They need healthy adrenal glands to help them be healthy through the process of menopause. And if their adrenals aren't healthy as a result of overconsuming coffee and caffeine or caffeine from soda pop or caffeine from chocolate, then their adrenals won't be healthy enough to maintain adequate hormone balance through the time of menopause. So choose decaf coffee as much as possible. And then rather than adding cream to it, use 1% or skim milk or low-fat soy milk, skip the whipped cream, omit the syrup. Or an alternative is to do it upright. Have your coffee the way you want it, with sugar, with cream, but do it rarely, like once a month for a treat. But what I prefer is green tea or herb teas instead. They're a lot healthier, and they don't have... uh, the caffeine in it. Now, green tea does have some caffeine, but a lot less. Now, if you've got a problem with your adrenal glands, if they're fatigued or exhausted, then even the caffeine in decaffeinated coffee and green tea may well be too much caffeine for you. So check with me first before you consider that a go-ahead to uh, to use those reduced caffeine beverages. By and large, if you've got a problem with your adrenals, we want to avoid caffeine completely. And green tea and decaffeinated coffee should be avoided as well in those cases. If you don't yet have an adrenal problem, then green tea and decaf coffee is probably okay as long as it's on an occasional basis. What are some healthy choices at Mexican food restaurants? Well, guacamole and sour cream should be on the side because they have a lot of calories. Guacamole, all the nines is watered down, if you will, with a lot of mayonnaise, which is high fat. If you make your own guacamole, different story entirely. Now, guacamole that you make yourself still has a fair amount of oil in it because avocados have oil, but it's a healthy oil. Still, you need to be concerned with the number of calories if you're watching your calorie intake, if you're trying to lose fat weight. Uh, It's a good idea to substitute tomato salsa. So dip your chips in tomato salsa instead of guacamole. And ideally, the chips should be baked instead of fried. Um... Flour tortillas are high glycemic, so are corn tortillas, but you should use baked instead of fried. And if you use a flour tortilla, it's better if it's whole wheat instead of white flour tortilla. But my preference is corn tortillas, just they should be baked instead of fried. You can order a low-fat, low-calorie appetizer, but really be careful about the nachos and cheese because you can pile on lots and lots of calories empty calories that way. And depending upon what they fry their tortillas in, they may be loaded with a lot of saturated fat or trans fats. At the all-you-can-eat buffet, you want to go for steamed or baked vegetable dishes. Spinach is good, although I'd stay away from creamed spinach. Mixed green salads are fine. You want to avoid potatoes and rice. Eat baked chicken instead of fried, baked fish instead of fried. And chicken or seafood salads and coleslaw may have a lot of mayonnaise, so you've got to be careful of those. But by and large, there are a lot of healthy choices at a lot of the buffets in town. So you just have to have to use your head and uh, really make some conscientious choices. When you're traveling, uh, allow time for a healthy breakfast. Make sure you don't overconsume at cocktail hour because... It's easy to do when you're socializing with people you work with or people you're doing business with. And make sure you exercise when you're on the road. Most hotels these days have a gym and or a swimming pool. So it's an excellent opportunity to exercise. And for those of us that don't have a gym at home, it's it's a real good opportunity to get exercise that maybe we're not getting enough of at home. 
whether it's in a gym or in a swimming pool. So make sure you avail yourself of the opportunity when you travel. It's an excellent way to not just trim off a few calories, but to enhance your level of vitality, mental focus, and energy. Exercise helps that. And you can actually enhance your performance on business trips by exercising. What about when you're flying? Well, you can request a special meal. You don't have to be a diabetic in order to request a diabetic meal. You don't have to have high blood pressure to request a low-sodium meal. Don't hesitate to ask for, uh, for healthier meals. You do want to avoid airport food, though, because most of it is fried, high in fat, and high in salt. So it's best to bring your own. Make sure you drink lots of water, because when you fly, it's easy to get dehydrated. And for that same reason, you want to limit caffeine and alcohol because both of those are diuretics. They cause you to lose a lot more fluid than is in those beverages. So when you're in an airport, it's a lot better to bring portable food with you. Some of the healthy meal replacement bars we have in the office here have balanced protein, healthy carbohydrates, and fat. You can also cut vegetables or fruit up in resealable plastic bags. And raw nuts are another excellent healthy choice to use both while you're in airport as well as on the flight. When you're eating at work, keep this in mind. When food is in sight and easy to get to, we tend to eat more of it and think we're not eating so much. If food is out of sight and more difficult to get to, we tend to eat less of it and think we're eating more, which is really interesting. So what you want to do is keep healthy food within sight and easy to get to raw nuts in a bowl on your desk. It's fine. Or fresh fruit, easily within reach. But the unhealthy food, chips, cookies, crackers, things like that, they should be on the top shelf, in a closet, in the back room, up two floors of stairs. Keep it as inconvenient as possible. And that will help you eat more of the healthy food and less of the unhealthy food. It will also help you feel full faster when you're eating that unhealthy food because you had to work to get it. So let's just summarize what we've gone over today. Uh, Supersized meals are normal in that they're all around us, but they're certainly not healthy. Uh, a restaurant that comes to mind is Claim Jumper. They serve huge portions. So that's one restaurant. When you go to it with a friend, you should plan on sharing an entree. Share the whole meal because their portions are absolutely humongous. Plan ahead, especially when you're traveling. Know what your options are. Pack your own food whenever possible because then you can be totally in control of what you eat. And choose wisely, whether you're eating out at restaurants, in an airport, or on the plane. You always have the power to choose wisely. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. Look forward to our next webinar together. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.